Design Review Board. My name is Catherine Porter, a chair of the Amherst Design Review Board. I call this meeting to order. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GLC 30A section 18, and the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, this public hearing of the Town of Amherst Design Review Board is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but the public can attend tonight's virtual meeting by using the Zoom login information provided on the meeting agenda listed on the meeting calendar, which, provide, which is provided on the Town of Amherst website. We will begin with a roll call of the members of the Design Review Board who have been impaneled for the consideration of the items on tonight's agenda. Please indicate when I call your name if you are here. Lindsay Schnarr. Here. Janet Marquard. Present. Eric Gazikos. Here. Tom Long. Here. Okay. Also in attendance is Maureen Pollock, Planner and Staff Liaison to the Design Review Board. The Design Review Board and its accompanying zoning regulations were created by town meeting in October 1983. The charge and purpose of the Design Review Board under Section 3.2 of the Zoning Bylaw is to preserve and enhance the town's cultural, economic, and historical resources by providing for a detailed review of all changes in land use, the appearance of structures, and the appearance of sites which may affect these resources. The Design Review Board exercises this responsibility by providing design review and recommendations to private applicants and permit granting boards within specific overlay zoning districts in the town center. The Design Review, the design review Overlay District and the Town Common Design Review Overlay District. Design review was also provided for town departments and permit granting boards with respect to town projects anywhere in Amherst, which will result in substantial alteration to the form of a, or appearance of a structure or site. All design review board meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff. Each meeting recording will be uploaded to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel for public viewing. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the meeting after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its question, the board will deliberate. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon recommendations for each respective application. Once the board has voted on its recommendation as a staff liaison, we'll type up the recommendation for distribution to the applicant board, applicable land use board and building commissioner. And tonight we have two applications. Uh, you can see them here on the agenda, DRB 2021-07, 20, the spoke. So we hear from the spoke first. Yep. Okay. Sure. So Chad's here. Hi, Chad. So if you could introduce yourself, uh, your affiliation and what you're proposing. And let me know if you want me to share the screen for you or if you want to share a screen to show. Um, yeah, I don't know how to do that. I'm oh, I can do that. Yeah, that's fine. Zoom, but you can, you can uh, share if, you, if we need to for, um, for the schematic that has been drawn up. But basically, the, we've, the spoke's been there since 1984. Um, in the same spot, the same building, 35 East Pleasant Street started in the middle. I took it over in 2017. Um, in 2018, we took over the Southern Pizza side and we expanded into that section. Um, and now in 2021, we are taking over the Amherst Copy side and expanding into that section. Um, and so we would like to, um, obviously the purposes of discussing with you guys is that uh, we would like to add another patio. So in the front of the building, there are three concrete sections of flower beds. Um, and in those, in two of the sections, we have, we have patios um, and then we maintain flower beds in them. 
Um, and so the the picture that Maureen has up there right now, um, the second one down is what Amherst Copies beds are, um, a little dilapidated at the moment, but um, the overgrowth would be removed. We would put up the exact matching fence of what's on the other end and the same bench layout, same garden flowers. We plant flowers there in the spring. Um, so that's one part of this we're proposing to do. The other part isn't much of a change. We're not adding any new signage. Um, we're not changing any storefront. It's an, it's an all glass front building, um, brick sided on three sides. And uh, the building's already been painted. Actually, the pictures that are taken there are, are sort of old because the paint has, uh, the pink that's in the top is actually all that charcoal gray of what you see there now is that all that pink is gone. Um, it's just the, the, the neutral color that's there now. Um, so I guess for design review board purposes, what we are looking for uh, approval on is, I, I think essentially just the patio really is the, the big thing. We've cleaned up the grounds tremendously. And one of the pictures Maureen had showed, we, we, um, we replaced the rotting fences that were falling down around the dumpster. So the, the presence of the building from what it's looked like in the past has come a dramatically long way. Mm -hmm. um, it's already much, much nicer there. So I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to to go over at the moment, Maureen. Other than the fact that I think the biggest thing is just the the addition of the the patio uh, in the front, the the third patio. That right there is what you what we have. That is the currently what it looks like out yeah. there right now. Um, so what we're proposing to do is remove that overgrowth and and add in our matching patio and the twin of what's what's already there in the other two spaces. So I saw up there at the top, uh, there was a frame for the old Amherst copy. Does that signage that's gone, did you take that down? Um, yeah, we removed it because it was printed in Amherst copy. Oh yeah, okay, and, it's down, okay. Yeah, it's down, it's not up there. We, we, they didn't, obviously we don't want it displayed there. They don't want it displayed there. No, no, no it just looks sort of ratty, just an empty frame. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I would assume the, the these um, string lights will continue. Yeah, those are those are there. They're down in the picture because we were. It was in the painting process at the time. Um, that in the previous design review board uh, from two years ago, we had already had approval to paint the exterior of the building. All we did is just the exact same color that was there. Just it was in really really bad shape, so we just kind of did a paint over on it. And these pictures were taken in the middle of that painting, but those are back up now. That pink is gone, um, and the. That nothing else is different on on uh, that side of the building. The I don't is there pictures of the far side of the building, Maureen? I don't know if we the, the I guess that would be the northern side, Prey Street, the Prey Street side. Uh yeah yeah um uh, uh that's the back. That's, that's the, the back. back. Uh that that's back. the back. Right there. Uh, there so I mean that was one of the biggest things when you used to come down East Pleasant Street to Prey Street, that side of the building because it's so such sun exposure was in in really bad shape. So um, that's now cleaned up the, the other side of the building, which is probably in a picture is as well. We don't plan to do anything, um, anything with the sides of the building. Um, <clears throat> there it is. Yeah. So we don't plan to do anything with the sides of the building. Obviously the, the decals that are in the windows will, will be removed. They're Amherst copy decals. Um, actually that tree one that's on the side there has already been removed. There's some ones on the front that look like waves. Those just peel off. Those will just be removed and we'll leave, be leaving a glass frontage. And just to re repeat, you wouldn't be putting a new spoke sign That's here. That's not our intention, no. Yeah. We certainly, if we did put a spoke sign up there, uh, you know, in the, again, we're in, we're in a little bit different times here because we're in times of COVID and we, we all believe that eventually in time we will, we will get back to some normality and things will, will change here. And there's certainly, a, you know, perhaps in the future, maybe put something down there but at the moment we don't have intention to because the main entrance for the for the bar is the main entrance that we already use so this is more of an extension of premises to allow us to add more square footage more tables and chairs um and it doesn't really require us to have signage down there in order to do so questions from the board i've got one um so just to clarify hi chad my name's erica um hi, erica. So it's exciting to see businesses expanding during this time. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I, just a quick clarification. Um, 
Catherine asked whether the um, frame support, uh, basically the electrical connection for the, the Amherst copy spine would be removed. And then you said yes, but then in your just just now you indicated that maybe it was still there and staying. I'd well, the electrical connection's all gone. It's already been removed. It was part of our electrical permit. There's no electrical connection anymore going to that front of the okay. building. It's all been removed. All right, so that that metal housing is next. And then um, the, metal, the metal housing itself remains at the moment, but the yeah, electrical and everything to it is completely removed. At right okay, now. so you mean that white panel where the Amherst, uh, that's still there? That is that is at the moment. Yes, that has. You're going to take that down. That's to me very distracting. Not... Yeah. So if you see in that picture, you see the Amherst copy signs that are laid down sideways right there. Yeah. Yeah. So we actually still have those in our possession. We remove those. And one of the things that came about, and I'm I'm certainly not against doing this if the board thinks it makes sense as well. Sean already off. Sean's the owner of Amherst Copy, and uh, you know, a friend of mine. And so Sean offered to actually reprint right over those. If you, Maureen, can you scroll down for one second to the current signs that we have on the other yeah, side? Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. the blue ones. So you see yeah. those that we have there. So those yeah. are light boxes. We don't add electricity to them. There's no lighting behind them. We don't need it because we have main lighting in the front of the building. So yeah. I never had intention of lighting those boxes, and the electrical from those has been removed. But I can do something like that where it's just a slide in, you know, we take the existing sliding panels that we have that have Amherst copy on them right now and they just do an overlay on them. And we can put signage right back yeah. up over there. What that would give is, uh, you know, a never against more advertising, more right. signage. So yeah. the box is already in place. It's actually in great condition. We have removed the electrical from it. So we would not add lighting to that box. And I would prefer not to have lighting in that box, but we could certainly laminate a, a sign over the existing plastic that slides in it, slide it right back in and, and, and give it, um, you know, a, a frontage there again, so it doesn't look yeah. so bad there. Yeah, I, I was interested in that because on the, um, on the drawings that you supplied from um, Fitch Architecture, um, there's a new double door, six foot wide double door that's identified as main entrance. And I was wondering if you were- Yeah, that's not, that's actually not correct. So in the picture that, um, that more, and, and there's actually been a, a new development in the last 24 hours in my discussions with David Cody and, and, um, and to, Maureen, can you go back up to the, the first picture you had for a second? The one you, uh, keep going uh, a little further, the one of the, just showing the front door sorry. of the, of the expansion side, the, the one you uh, had straight well, here's on. Door right here. One more down, one more down is perfect. Right there. That, yeah, yeah, that so guy. If we view that picture. So in my discussions with David Cody and talking about, um, requirements for egress and everything else, Laura took it upon herself to add in what she, she knew she knew that we were going to need 72 inch double doors so she had taken it upon herself to put it into the drawings that the double doors would be in the picture you're looking at to the right of that expanded side and we would remove those those um, windows there and and add double doors and the reason why is she also in the drawing had put that the patio would be enclosed. And that was never our intention. So this has been corrected in the last um, 48 hours. And the reason that she put that is, well, the natural egress out of that door, you can see that the patio ends and there's an opening between the existing patio and the new patio. And so it would just make sense for the door to come straight out into that. In my discussions with Dave, David Cody and her and, and figuring out all egresses, we've decided to not do the door there and the existing door would be turned into a 72 inch door. So that, that door right now that's under the sign that we're referring to um, in the middle of the building, that door would actually be the double door and the patio would not be enclosed. Right. So that would allow for a six foot, the, the, from the end of the patio to the windows about uh, 72 inches. So that would give us six feet of egress at all times. Both We have double doors out the back, which is 72 inch egress out the back already existing. If we turn that 45 inch door into a 72 inch door, which would just be basically taking that panel out to the right of it and adding the door in right there, and we did not enclose the patio, we meet all requirements for AAB and accessibility for, for that egress in and out of the both sides. Well, I think that that makes a good case for adding your signage above that double door because it feels like that becomes. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, I mean, that's a nice yep. way to signal that. But this isn't your main entrance. You're still saying you'll use the original main entrance. This is an exit more than anything. It would also be so we our intention of doing this is to allow for a, an Amherst function hall as well in which it could be 
the that side will be able to function independently. It has its own two bathrooms that are fully um, handicap accessible. It has its own bar. Um, and so what we would do, especially in the off season, summer times, is we would allow it to be rented out. Um, we would use it for events, um, perhaps live music events, um, stuff like the, you know, um, the wine and paint nights and those type of events that we could we could allow to function there. It can function independently at that point. It would be it would function as a main a main entrance at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. When we are when we are busy, especially that we you know can't hide the fact that we're a student base bar. Uh, when we are functioning during the college season, um, we prefer to have one means of egress, uh, and that way, from a management perspective, it makes it really easy. Every door we lock, we are um, every one of our doors is maintained by a doorman uh, four nights of the week, and they are exit only except for a main entrance. So at that point, it would function as an exit only. But I agree, the signage aspect, I I completely agree. I would love to see that, you know, if, if, it, it, it's so simple to to have that. Um, we have the plastic already for it, uh, to revinyl it and slide those right back in that that box and, and put a signage up there. And yeah. um, if the board, you know, agrees with that, it's that's something that's so simple to do. Right. Yeah, so if you don't do that, then <clears throat> I would recommend you take that whole frame oh, out. Completely, and completely yeah. agree. Yeah, um, but now will that, this new double, this new and large door will it be wheelchair accessible it doesn't look this it is it? yep yep just like the other side we uh we are full wheelchair accessible on our main entrance yeah uh, okay well this one side. doesn't yep. look it, it probably have to do something there well that's up to you well there are yeah, we have to window to the right making it double size catherine yeah. yeah, when we remove that panel, um, um, Greenfield Glass is, is who would do it for us. And, and so right now, I see what you're, you're, you're saying, Catherine, where it kind of looks like there might be um, a threshold yeah. that doesn't make it uh, accessible. That would yeah. change. They would, okay. they would okay. when we did that, that whole, it's not just adding a door. It's, yeah. it's un unfortunately, you can't do it that way, which would be much more cost effective. You actually would have to remove that entire panel okay. and put okay. a whole new 72 yeah. inch egress with no muon in the middle. There's no, you're not allowed to have a barrier in between. So it'll be a full swinging uh, double door. So in your schematics, you show this patio enclosed like the other, but now you're saying you wouldn't enclose? Yeah, that was never I, that was never the intention. And I actually never even picked up on it until me and David Cody were discussing the door egress. And he said to me, well, we need to have that door because when everyone goes out into the patio, they'd be trapped there. And I said, well, no, there's no closure on the patio it's the twin of the other side and he said oh your sketch shows a patio being enclosed and I, I didn't even pick up on that until I went back and looked at it and said oh you're right it's not supposed to be and I've actually today I've already been in discussion with Laura Fitch she's, she's doing redrawing some of the stuff uh, for David Cody uh, that came up in my discussion with him unfortunately we had a a zoom meeting you know technology today we had a zoom meeting um, Maureen, the one that we were on, we, you and Rob and Dave Cody was part of it, but couldn't yeah. talk or yeah. say anything. So his questions, uh, yeah. he never he got me, to address any of them. He told yeah. me that afterwards and yeah. I said, oh, I wish you had walked over to my desk to let me know. Or well, He told me that a week later, literally a week yeah. later in our discussion. He's like, oh yeah, I had so many questions for you that I couldn't address. And I'm like, David, this was a week ago. And, uh, yeah. and finally we got to have our discussion and we got to kind of hash out what made the most sense for, uh, you know, means of egress through so in and still out. And be, there'll still right. be a fence in the front of it. You're just saying the side will be open. It'll Correct. still match across the front though. Correct. It would be okay. the twin. If um, Maureen, is there a picture of the uh, existing patio all the way towards the Prey Street end? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, there is. Right yeah, there. So you like see that. how that's open It'll on the like end. That. We okay. we put a we put a chain on just for privacy purposes, especially when we're closed. Uh, but when we're open, um, on regular nights, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, that chain is removed. If there's any line that that comes out of the building whatsoever, we control it on our own patio. That patio actually gets closed. Um, when we're open on busier nights and is not allowed to be used. We do not have any patio furniture out there. Again, we're in a little bit of a different day and age right now in that um, we function completely as a restaurant. We have tables and chairs. Those tables and chairs that you see in that picture actually get, if, this, if it wasn't COVID right now and we were functioning under, under normal circumstances, there would not be tables and chairs on that patio out there. Um, and that's the way we, we function uh, basically from uh, September 1st till May. And then when the students depart, we reopen uh, off all of our patios. Okay. 
Can I make a can I make a comment? Um, so to second Erica's comment, I I congratulate you on expanding, and it's exciting to think about those times when we can come back to to this type of entertainment. Um, I'm looking at this band, the gray band that's behind the spoke sign that wraps around wraps along the entire length of the building. Yep. And I'm wondering if you considered or would consider um, and how the board feels about the idea of painting that the same blue as the sign. Um, <laughs> Go ahead. We have thought about that in the past. We actually, that was part of the last design review board uh, meeting and there was kind of mixed reviews on it of whether it would be obnoxious to be that much blue around it. Um, the building used to have a stripe that went around the entire building, a pink one, which was which was pretty ugly. And there was discussion about putting that too. And I think it kind of boiled back down to saying, well, if we don't do that and we kind of neutral, again, that's why we went with the, the very light gray, both trim mm -hmm. and walls is to kind of neutral everything and allow the signage to stick out because we did go back and forth of how what would that unfortunately that's one of those things where you kind of don't know until you really see it and yeah. it's a bold move um and i think from the porta building we learned about bold moves um so yeah. uh yeah i i, I well, let me just let me yeah. just tell you my thoughts, and that that is that um, you know perhaps I don't know exactly when that conversation was, but now that you have taken over that whole length of the space, um, you know I think that there's some some strength in unifying that facade in some way, um, and so perhaps you know I think the fencing will do that to some extent. They'll add some consistency throughout you know the landscaping, um, and it, so you know it's just I think now part of our conversation about, you know, where's the signage and where's the entry. Um, and I agree that certainly, you know, too much of a bold thing is, is, is not what we want. Um, but I don't know, I, I just, I think it might be worth considering, especially given that you have that, that full length to work with. I, I think it could, it could actually look really nice to have um, that kind of like punch of color that just wraps all the way around. Well, going back to that sign box that we have back the other side too, that's a 20 foot sign box. And if we did that, the what you see right there uh, in front of you here, those, it would basically be two of those. Uh, take mm -hmm. the blue with the spoke white logo in the middle and we put that into the sign box that's on the other side. I think it would tie it in together. I completely agree with you. And I think uh, not having the patio out there currently with that overgrown, um, flower box area that's there does really give it a bad look and I and I think that when we bring in that other patio matching colors matching everything and if we put that if we left that sign box there and put the blue sign up I agree with you wholeheartedly I think it would really tie that building in together and kind of complete the whole look from it yeah I just I guess I was thinking that the signage having two two signs can often be a little confusing in terms of where the entrance is so um you know, I think that there's certainly an advantage to having, in the absence of doing um, any anything, I would say definitely put the other sign up. Um, but um, yeah, I I think it could be worth an it could be worth a quick Photoshop study just to look at what it what would happen if you brought that band all the way across. Yeah, it's a good idea. Do a Photoshop see. It gives it a little. Uh, personality too yeah because it's a very long building with a lot of glass and uh, it's a fishbowl yeah definitely do you have blinds in there uh, any kind of shade uh we, we we don't the windows are uh slightly tinted mr tint i've actually just discussed with mr tint they're going to come in um i've got quotes right now from them to tint the upper parts of the, the windows a little bit. It's nothing that would affect the, the look per se because it's a very mild tint, but what it would right. do would be help us reduce the um, the intrusion of the sun yeah. that does come through those because there is a lot of sun exposure where the, the sun comes right up and over that building. And um, from about three o'clock in the afternoon to five o'clock in the afternoon, especially um, right. in the spring as we approach summer, it, it's very impactful on that building, yeah. 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 Did you abandon your idea of having the window cut out and sell pizza after hours? We did. Yeah, it, it just it, it became too much from a man, management perspective. I mean, I, as you can imagine, this town, uh, a bar that's that's a, a main student bar. By 1 a.m., we've sort of had enough. Uh -huh. yeah. 
Yeah. Any other thoughts or, or suggestions? Are we okay with the... So what do you want to do about the, Lindsay, you know, do you want to sort of encourage a Photoshop of the front of the building to uh, maybe get a big, better impression of what a band would look like? Or are you just putting that out as a casual? How, how do other yeah. people on the board feel about it? What about the rest of, what about everybody That's else? fine, unless you want them to come back to us then and it's gonna slow down their timeline. I don't know how much time- I, I wouldn't have. say that. I, I think it's not something that we can, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't know that it's within our domain to say, you have to paint this Absolutely. blue. Um, I just think um, it would be interesting to hear other people's thoughts on it as a recommendation or a suggestion. You know, I think, I think it, it makes sense. Um, hi, I'm Tom, uh, nice to meet you. Um, I think it makes sense. Um, I, I also see the benefit of um, simplicity of keeping it gray. Um, I don't think the secondary sign would be confusing if there were plate times when they would want to use it as a secondary venue, right? So if it's, you know, it has two entrances at certain points during the year for private parties and whatnot, that it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, I do think it would unify the facade to have that sign. I think I, I would recommend that you have that sign either way. Uh -huh. Yeah. And that building's so 55 feet long. It would be great blue long, and it would be yeah. great red. Yeah. yeah. It's, I don't know if you heard me. That built this building's 55 feet long. So you're correct when you're saying it's a it's a long building. It's, it is. It's, it's much longer than it looks in these pictures when you're yeah, out there. So it is. Um, you know, I I agree on that. Where I think when you're down one corner of it, um, and and I completely agree with what Lindsay was saying. I feel like if the building was 20 or 30 feet long, then perhaps the two signs together would really kind of cluster and wouldn't make sense. But the building's 55 feet, and those those signs are probably 35 feet apart side end to end so I do think they're far enough apart that they don't really kind of yeah. blend in too much. I, I can believe it. that and I and I think it doesn't necessarily change my thought on it could be cool to have the blue um, but I don't think you necessarily have to have it it just might be worth looking at okay. as well because okay. um, it's a neat feature you know it's it's okay. something we, that a lot of businesses don't really have the opportunity to do Mm -hmm. to have that kind of like presence, you know, that street presence to like wrap the whole kind of like in a, in a really, you know, it's actually not that obnoxious of a blue looking at it here, especially it's uh, certainly not as obnoxious as the Porta blue. I don't think anything could be nice. <laughs> um, yeah, start on that one. But, you know, I think hopefully that will change in time. And, you know, you kind of have this, you have such a simple, simple aesthetic with your signage that um so looking at it from from this perspective it does look like the amherst uh copy sign uh or what's the uh frame that's left for it is considerably longer than the one on the far on the yeah. right it's going to be uh, so you're going to have a little bit of a imbalance though i don't know that most people driving by or walking by would notice it. it's only people that are looking across uh Kendrick Park would notice that you've got signs of different uh, sizes. Believe it or not, it's two feet difference. In Is it, okay. It looks, it's a little bit noticeable, but. Yeah. Okay. Any, Jan, do you have any uh, comments or thoughts? I don't have any strong feelings one way or the other. Okay. I'd be happy to move that we accept it with the suggestion to consider trying the blue. Good. Okay. Yeah. It's been moved. Um, is there a second? Second. Okay. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All right. All in, okay. So I'll go through the names here. And I just have a clarifying question. Uh, so if Chad, what? I have a clarifying question. So if Chad maybe does uh, like a you know a little Photoshop study and says, oh yeah, I guess the blue does make sense. Can he just proceed and, and do the blue uh, ribbon um, or would he need to come back to the board? No, he could go ahead. I mean, it's I think recommendation. Okay, cool. I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, okay. All right, let me go through the uh, uh, 
the uh, names here. Uh, Lindsay Schnarr. Um, yes, or yeah, uh, do you? Uh, <clears throat> yes, and I just wanted to add one note, which is okay. um, with that suggestion, um, we just want to be careful that the blues are truly a match, and that's mm -hmm. all. Otherwise, it might yeah. be a funky yeah, situation. No, they, yeah. Right, it would be. You know, <laughs> it would be. Yes, we, right. have this, we have a signature color, so which we've had for three years, and we branded ourselves with that. So we, we would Good. do that. As you can tell by all the matching umbrellas and signage out there. Yeah, it's it's nice. Um, okay. Uh, yes, I agree. All in favor? Okay. Janet Marquardt. Yes. Uh, Erica. Yes. Tom. Yes. Catherine. Yes. Okay. Very good. Great. Well, Thanks, Chad. Uh, <laughs> you guys. I'll give that info to uh, Inspection Services. Okay. Great. Best of luck. Okay. Thank you. Have a great day. Uh, okay. okay. So we have now the um, sofa sign. So uh, Piranha um, from the town is with us um, to talk about, um, um, about, the, about the updates uh, regarding the CARES Act and the SUFA sign. And Thank you, Maureen. Um, and thank you everybody for giving me some more time today. Um, I just wanted to give you an update um, based upon revised guidance uh, from the state using our CARES Act fund. When I had originally spoken with you and presented to you, we um, were working to get things acquired by a certain date, which um, the state had revised in the last week and a half to um, needed to be installed and in its useful production life by that date. Uh, so that's why I am here today um, to, uh, to also let you know that you know the council based upon your guidance um, and recommendation and upon clarifying some other points with them has approved the signs for a one year pilot project, which means that they're going to uh, from one year from the date of installation um, that's, that's the only time that they've given us. So should we want to proceed past that, we would be going through the same process again. Um, so I just wanna put the reminder out there that this is um, a one year pilot project, not a, not a permanent project as we stand right now. Um, and with that being said, we've had to move up the installation date of, of the signs um, and how that impacts this group is I had hoped to give more lead time for us to um, co-produce and review the, the back uh, vinyl element, uh, which you had seen just a sample of in the past. So uh, what, we've, what we're hoping to do um, and what we're planning to do, and I can pull up um, the image that we have as a mock-up is to use this opportunity, um, this challenge as an opportunity, since the signs need to be installed prior to 12:30, um, using the back vinyl as a temporary um, design for public health reminders as we enter into um, what looks to be um, a season where we'll need as much public health information going on as possible. Um, so I will pull up my screen um, so that we can have a visual along with this. Um, that being said, as we talked about in the past, we would have the opportunity, um, and we can do this almost immediately after, after the signs have been installed, is think about what we want to change it to, um, so that the idea was we would originally have been in line with the wayfinding signs install, installation in the spring. Um, we can still do that. However, we need the signs to go in in order to make the project viable. So I'm going to show you what we propose. Um, it's not been, it's, this is just a, a sample mock-up. So give me one moment and I will share my screen with you. <clears throat> okay. All right, so this is um, what we had seen before. Um, if you're familiar with the, the front of the sign, um, the only thing that's different about this picture is if you can hone in on the, the left, the sides, the side inserts of the sign, when we had originally showed you just a mock-up, those were red, um, just to have some color there, but we've gone ahead and put in the matching color from the wayfinding signs as, as the offset color there. 
So the difference is, sorry, I'm trying to find the photo, um, is keeping what we've proposed on the front side of the sign to be in line with the wayfinding as you have seen it previously, um, to have some sort of um, intermediate public health reminders um, in, in line with some of the other examples in other communities. And again, this is just a quick mock-up, mock but we wanted to have access information um, to resources to folks who might be visiting the town and not aware of how to report concerns. Um, we have the website here for our actual COVID-19 information and then just some general reminders. Again, we're not tied to this text isn't isn't permanent, but it was just in order to show you what we were envisioning um, for these for the temporary backs of the signs. Are we uh, just a quick, quick clarifying question? Are we supposed to be commenting on the this graphic? I know you said it's temporary. So, do you want us to comment on it or? So I, I'm happy to take any, this hasn't been put into production or anything like that. So I'm, um, since it, the signs have already been approved, I, I just thought it, because I promised to come back to this group um, prior to things going in the ground, I wanted to hold as much truth to that promise despite the, um, the updated guidance as possible. So um, with that being said, if there are things that you would recommend that I can incorporate. I'm more than willing to do so. Um, I know that this won't, and Maureen can correct me if I'm wrong, this doesn't necessarily have to, um, this doesn't lead to a vote, but um, guidance or suggestions, I'm more than willing to take on and make sure that it gets put into this temporary version that, that we'll need for the backs of the signs. If that um, answered your question, I hope. Yeah, so my, my thoughts are that I think I think overall, and I wasn't present for the last meeting, so I don't know exactly what was discussed, but I think it certainly addresses what was discussed prior to that, which was that we wanted some consistency um, with the wayfinding signs that were already um, being discussed for town. And I think this certainly does that. And I think it looks, it looks nice overall. Um, the only thing that stands out to my eye, which is just like a very minor thing, um, and perhaps others disagree and I, I don't feel strongly about it. It's just one minor critique is the outline of the stay safe Amherst just feels um, maybe that border could just go away. Um, that's, it just kind of feels a little um, like it might, might, might not be needed or something. Um, I agree. <laughs> that was one of my initial notes back to them when I got this um, yesterday. So I, I completely agree. And that's something that I um, plan on asking them to remove, especially if that is, um, if this group's in agreement, it's a little extra. And then I guess there's only one other thing in my mind, which is like, is there a way to make it slightly more playful? Um, and it doesn't need to be right now. Like, obviously it's not a happy time in our world, but, um, if there, if there were any thoughts about adding a certain kind of, like I, um, I spend time at UMass and they have the like, it's, it's, what is it, Erica? It's tough, but it's, it's helpful. It's, it's hard, but it helps. It's hard, but it helps. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know that's not just a UMass phrase, yeah. but you know, there is like a certain kind of, I don't know, punchiness to it or something like that. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm open to thoughts on that front, but like ways to just make it a, li a little more interesting. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I think, you know, I think it's clear and I think it's consistent with the overall um, wayfinding um, kind of branding that we're doing and overall, like I have no issues with it at all. Just more of a, a thought of like, is there a way to make it more playful? But um, that's it. Maybe, maybe there's a number four is something playful like yeah like something just to cheer, yeah. cheer people up a little bit because yeah i remember uh i maybe back in september um umass had a banner over south pleasant street and it said smile even like i forget what it said like wear your mask but smile underneath i i'm mm -hmm. i'm yeah. not I'm not saying that correctly but wear it, a mask and wear a smile and you, yeah um, something like yeah. that yeah I think, I, agree I think with that's what a Lindsay great. said about the border. I would also remove that. I also kept thinking that maybe that 
font was different, but I guess it is the same font as the Amherst above. It's just so condensed. And if you could spread those letters a little further apart, it might look more like the one above. Also, could the phrase be more directed to include both residents and visitors? Because right now, if you're a visitor and you come in and you see that, you almost think, well, okay, that's for Amherst people. Mm -hmm. She says to me, like, keep our town safe, or um, I, um, I don't know, something that would just direct it to anyone who looks at it. You know what I mean? You could say everyone. <laughs> The, yeah, or just and maybe that's the place you could be playful with the phrase somehow. And then the only other thing is the three numbers are so serif and everything else is sans serif. It's kind of funny. I guess the the difference is part of making you notice it, but they really kind of jar to me when you see them. Great, thank you. I'm just over here taking notes. Um I have very little to say to add, except that the bottom of the shield, the Amherst shield with the book and the sheaves of wheat is clipped off, which kind of drives me nuts. But um, other than that, I think that it's, it's, it's looking good. I, it's a good message. It's clear, works for me. So the one thing people seem to agree about, about is take the box away from stay safe Amherst, yep. potentially put a fourth number there and be-, be I wouldn't playful. add a fourth number because I think it gets to be too many. Things. All right, okay. So if you want to do something playful, you have to incorporate it into yeah. what we have there. Finish the bottom of the shield. I hadn't even noticed that Eric. but yes, it's really annoying the way it breaks. Yeah. Are you talking about this Erica where it cuts off yeah 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 oh I was looking down below the <laughs> one below is fine it yeah match, yeah yeah well sorry um Jane I totally agree with you it, I I feel like it would become too busy um yeah when I, what, although I did suggest uh, adding a fourth yeah. I, I think it would just be too much mm -hmm. I mean these are the important points people are and I'm, I'm okay with the serifs. I think they're playful and they draw your attention. I think they're doing what they're intended to do is to set them off from the other information. So I, I, I think that those work and I agree about the box and the shield. Okay, that's fine with me. I just, they just jumped out at me, but yeah, I can see them as playful. Yeah. Maybe that's your phrase, play it safe, Amherst. <laughs> I like it. Um, Okay, so I, I have those all, um, most of those things are already on my list, but I do appreciate that other people see things in a similar way. Um, so obviously this will make sure is, is finished off. Um, we'll make any um, revisions to, to these to make them as clear as possible. And just why we have the three is they're jumping off of what the public health director has um, told me are her three main points. So that's kind of how we arrived at those. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then I, I like the idea of keep our town safe um, and getting rid of that white box and making sure the text really matches everything else um, or something playful in that area. And, and I will, uh, I'll just say generally because of this really um, escalated timeline, I, I appreciate all of your time and input into this project and um, we can get something up in the ground and then we can come back to something that maybe is in line with or lends additional information to uh, the wayfinding signs because I really think that's important. Um, you may need forward. an interim one that says something about how to get the vaccine. Mm. Yeah, so at, down at the bottom, I, I'm not a huge fan of QR codes for, for many reasons, but we do, um, we do link to our community um, standalone COVID site, which is where we'll, all up-to-date information will be, including vaccines. But I think we do have that opportunity, as we discussed in the past, um, to change these out. I mean, if we think about a quarterly basis to something is 
um, something that we can get ramp up to for the spring. And if that's the direction that we want to go in, then we could do something. Do you know like what that. the other side is for? Yeah, yeah. live information. The live information feed. Yeah, that's true. It could go there and it could have yeah. the actual locations, you know, your doctor's office, the this, the that clinic or something. Yeah. Yeah, so we can push out local updates here um, using that space. And, and then the only, the only other thing that I was going to show you is that there is, this is something um, similar to other communities that they've done uh, with, with great success. Ours will look slightly different just so you can see what it looks like in, in real life. Um, I hope that you can see my screen here. Mm -hmm. And then, but ours would obviously be in our color ways um, and we would extend our color all the way to the the, the top of the sign to avoid that metal um, contemporary look that we discussed in the past. Great. Do we need to vote on this or is it just a kind of extension? Of this sort of an information, is it um, update? What would you want, Maureen? I don't think it matters. Uh, why not, just to be safe, why don't you make a motion? And, and it, so if I heard you correctly, it would be to remove the outline, uh, yeah. Don't um don't cut out the seal to add those portions of of it of that image, and um, if possible, play with where it says. Um, sorry, you, you uh, took away the screen. Uh, oh, where, sorry. I no, that's fine. Where uh, at the top? Where the words within the box, the outline. You had played around with maybe uh, keep our town safe. You'll have to play around with it because keep keep our town safe. That that might be too many words for that space. I thought Jan's was play it safe. Aunt. Oh, was play it safe. Much? I said a couple of things. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> well, I I I feel like uh, maybe uh, giving Brianna some flexibility. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. That's fine. I mean, she's. I wouldn't. I wouldn't think you need to say Amherst again because it's Amherst right above and mm. right more space. If you just say true, anybody looking at it, play it safe. <laughs> Yeah, or whatever, creep the yeah. town, safe, whatever, but you don't need the word Amherst. No, no. That's a very good point. All right, yeah. so with all those suggestions, and did I miss any other uh, recommendations? I think that was it. So uh, I guess, uh, does someone want to make a motion? Okay, I'd like to move. Yeah. Um, I move that we approve it with the little suggestions that we made. Okay, a second. Second to that motion by Jan. Um, okay, I was moved and second. All in, all in favor, and I'll go through the names here. Tom Long. Yes. Erica. Yes. Janet. Yes. Lindsay. Yes. And Catherine I. So you should. Yay. Blessing. <laughs> okay. Great. That, thing. That's okay. it. Um, technically, you do need to have a Although there is no members of the public, actually, let me double check. Yeah, I want uh, to ask you: Is the time? Do we have anybody from the public? Here? No, we don't. Okay. You know. Okay. So, Were there any minutes? No, no. I okay. will be working on that. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I've been right. dunking too many things, but That's I, I, right. I yeah. will be working on that. Okay. Any other business that anybody wants to uh, oh. bring up? All right. Then, um, do I hear a motion that the meeting be adjourned? I'll move well, that too. <laughs> <laughs> we I'll need you, Jan. <laughs> keep things moving along. Okay. I'm always happy to. It's anybody I would like to second that. Just to move to <laughs> sec. Anybody want to second that? Okay. So we get out of here. <laughs> okay. It's a moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Aye. <laughs> okay. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Happy Let's holidays. Well.